We're live. All right. This is Mr. Anonymous. If you've never met him, here he is. He's from Norway. He's a little buddy of mine that Andreas, who helped me wake up and get out of the, and you know, literally wake up and escape out of the Church of Scientology in 2000. I was in it for 30 years. And that sounds like a long time. And it was a long time, but it was very, very different than it is now. Um, so I want to make sure people understand that. Oh, yeah. Okay, good. Sean's there. All right, good. Hi, Sean. Good. So somebody's here. It's always weird for me because there's a little bit of a lag. And it's sort of like, do I have it going? You know, because they, they came last night and helped me. Um, DOA and, and Lara. And they definitely are a huge help. Hi, good SP. Hello. Hi, Bottoms Up. Hi, Psych Sauced. <laughs> Hi, Nadia. Hi, it's good to see you guys. I'm glad you're here. So it's Midnight with Magoo again. And um, yeah, Andreas helped me wake up in 2000. And I had been reading books for about 10 years. So I'm really big on reading. And that reading is a way to help you wake up um, from anything. You know, if you're in an abusive relationship, I'm really big on reading, TED Talks. I have to fix my lipstick because I can see it looks really funny. Um, but like different things like that where it's educational. That's right. <laughs> That's a little better. Okay. So anyway, I don't have many of you gone to TED Talks or used it at all? It's really great. I mean, even for your kids, you know, if you have something that they need, you can just type up the topic. And there's somebody that'll have, that's a professional that'll be there speaking. And it's really educational and good. They have a lot of great tips. But so do books. So does music. Um, people, obviously, talking to people. But anyway, Andreas helped me wake up. After 10 years of reading these books, I got on the internet. And that's a whole different story. But I wrote the escape story. So you kind of, hopefully, you guys have watched that. If you haven't, watch it because it'll kind of catch you up to what where we're at now. And tonight I'm just going to tell you a story of something that happened. Are you okay if I tell you a story? Hi, <laughs> Tori and the Chatters. That's right. Okay, good. So this is kind of a good story, I think. I mean, it was a personal story to me, but it was really shocking. You know, I had escaped out, came back, and different people started calling me up. I know yesterday, if you missed yesterday, watch it because it was very funny. DOA was a riot. And so was Laura. So it was very funny. It was just, I know he was really stoned. So it was really funny. But anyway, we had a great time. And definitely hit the like button. Thank you, love it. Hi, and thank you for being here. And yeah, if you haven't liked it, hit the like button, please. And then also, if you haven't subscribed, please do that too, because our subscriptions are going up. So that's good. Um, okay, so when I came back from escaping out, you know, I went to Clearwater for probably about a month and then I came back and just tons, I had put my phone number up on the internet saying I'm leaving Scientology. So tons and tons of people, not Scientologists, but tons of just regular people called me, you know, people who had children in Scientology and wanted my help to get them out. People who had just left Scientology and wanted to share their story with me. I mean, it was kind of amazing. It was it was a lot of different things. So one day, this minister calls me and he says, uh, "I'm, you know, Father so and so, and I'd like to meet you for lunch. I want to talk to you about Scientology." I know it's story time. So I say, "Okay, you know, that sounds good to me." You know, and and remember back then, I have no idea who is really a real person and who is the Office of Special Affairs because they were also inviting me to, to lunch, but I always could tell when it was them. And th that's a different story for another time, but it's very funny. But anyway, this guy invited me to lunch and he was a real minister and he said, um, I want to have a, I want to have a meeting at a college inviting a bunch of ministers. And I want you and Dr. Stephen Kent to both speak on Scientology and fair game. I said, okay, you know, I was okay on that, but I said, you have to know they're going to be there. And he said, no, no, they're not. And I said, and that's because, and he said, well, it's invitation only. 
And I said, okay, it might be invitation only, but I'm just telling you, I know Scientology and they will get in. One way or the other, they're going to be there. So just plan on it. So the day comes closer and closer and he, it's all set up and all these ministers are coming and it's at a college. And so I'm going and, you know, I have no idea what's going to happen. This is, I think it was the first time I spoke publicly. And so um, I get in there and his hair is like sticking out, not literally, but it's like, you can tell he's freaked out. And I walk up to him and I say, what's going on? And he goes, they got in. And I said, what happened? And it was Barbara Wiseman, who is an OT in Scientology. <clears throat> and she had called a minister and said, look, I really want to go and hear this talk. How about if you come to this talk that we're having, you know, we'll trade tickets kind of thing. And he said, okay, because they don't know the difference, really. You know, just sort of, the, they don't know me. So, and they probably didn't even know Dr. Stephen Kent. So it was sort of like, okay, you know, we'll trade tickets. So now she's in and I, and I know them and I know what's going to happen, but I'm, I'll tell you. So I speak and tell different examples that they'd already done fair gaming me. Part of it being me escaping out and stuff like that. They chasing me across the country, the Tampa police getting me out of the Tampa or airport stuff they did in Clearwater while I was there. I came home, they did shit here, flattened my tires, broke into my house, stripped my computer. You know, it's like they 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 were hardcore in 2000. I mean, it was bad news. So um, I'm telling them my fair game story. So they're all listening very clear, clearly. And this is right, kind of right after 9-11. And so now Dr. Se Stephen Kent speaks, and he's been studying fair game around the world with Scientology. And he's a doctor, so he starts speaking, and he's got really good stories also. And, you know, so we're thinking, yeah, <laughs> it, it, you know, we're thinking, okay, this is good. This is going to impinge on these, these ministers, right? And right at the end, good old Barbara, Scientologist, she raises her hand, you know, because they're all kind of like really on our side at this point. It's like, hey, that's not okay, right? And she raises her hand and she goes, you know, the world is in such a bad place. I really think we should just concentrate on the positive and not this negative stuff. You know, it's like we really, really need to be ministers. And, you know, she gives a little pitch and they all kind of cave in because she's, you know, they think, OK, she's right. And that's it. And that's the end of the show. Right. And so I think oh, I can't believe it. This is my first time speaking out publicly, but it taught me a lesson I will never forget. And the lesson is, no matter what we say, Scientology will always prove what we say is right. And you have to remember that way. If you're out picketing, speaking, protesting, talking to someone, it's like truth is on our side, right? And here we were, you know, it looked like it wasn't. But we walk outside and what had the great office of special affairs done? They sent all these young kids and they're passing out these flyers against Dr. Stephen Kent. They have his picture of him and all kinds of shit about him. And, and the ministers freak out because now they realize what we said is true. And our stuff was long, you know, it was an hour long thing of fair game. It was a lot of stuff. And all of a sudden they realize, wow, these, these chicks are telling the truth. Hello, <laughs> Uptown Squirrel <laughs> from the Netherlands. I love that. Anyway, um, I love that all you guys are here. I really do. Thank you. So now these kids are, I'm telling them about, I'm talking to some ministers. We're, we're talking about fair game, me and Dr. Stephen Kent. At the end, Scientology had slipped in and they're like, oh, I think we should just concentrate on um, she is from, she's from the Church of Scientology Office of Special Affairs. You know, she was working with them. And so it is the Church of Scientology. She's definitely, she's an OT, which is one of the top guys in their triangle. And she's been around for a long time. So I know her. I know her really well. So she's one of the reasons that helped me really wake up. Some of the stuff she did that was just awful. So anyway, now I'm there with her and she tries to screw us over. 
we go outside and these kids are all passing out these flyers against Dr. Stephen Kent. And so, yeah, what are we going to do? And the ministers all put a circle around me, you know, because we can all imagine worse things than actually happened. Do you know what I mean? And I'm sure they imagined, here, you know, putting together all the fair game stuff we had said. And now these, these guys passing out flyers against Dr. Stephen Kent. And I think they served him a subpoena also. So it was like really icky. And so these ministers put a circle around me to get me to my car because they were afraid they, they were going to hurt me, which I knew they wouldn't. But anyway, they got me to the car. That's it. I go home. And now a couple of days later, the minister calls me and he says, look, they really want to have a private meeting with me at Celebrity Center. I said, of course they do. I mean, that's standard for Scientology. And he said, really? And I said, oh, yeah, yeah. But they, I promise you, they're going to lie through their teeth. You've never done any of their courses. So you are going to look kind of frankly like an idiot. You are you know, that's what their intention will be. And that's what's going to happen because you've never done any of their courses, right? And you may know a lot of stuff, but it's mostly from reading and hearing personal stories and stuff like that. It's not that they're not true. It's just they're going to lie about them. So he said, well, would you come with me? And I said, I will. And we also brought Jeff Jacobson, who was another pro protester who'd never been in Scientology, but he was the one who did the first, he found out about Lisa McPherson on his own, doing just doing research and found out all the facts about it and stuff like that and put up the website and everything else. So he came along with us. Hi. So I thought, gee, what should I bring? And so I thought, I think I'll just bring my SP to Claire, right? That's all. You know, that's good enough. And so I kind of put it in a little bag and, and I'm there and they have, and this is a backstory that you have to know to understand because a lot of Scientologists don't know this, but in the nineties, it came down because we were doing seminars with, with doctors, right? With L. Ron Hubbard's technology and all this shit. And then all of a sudden it had to all go through a lady who had to type it all out. And I said, why are we doing this? And he said, we, because the critics, meaning people who were never in, but were against Scientology, all went into to see a, they went to see a judge and said, look, these people over here, you know, Mary says th the definition is this and Joe explains it this way. And the other guy explains it this way. They all have different ways of explaining it, which is true. That's the way it was in the old day. Everybody, you never knew, you know, you'd go somewhere to hear a talk on Scientology and be like, wow, I never thought of that, you know, because they would put in their own examples and stuff like that. So these guys went in and said, OK, so they have all these different ways that they use it. So the fact is there is no standard tech, which was Scientology's always there. You know, we have our standard tech and they're using it, the critics. And so they said, no, we're not, we're, we're using their tech, but so are they, you know, and because they're using all kinds of different tech, we can use it too. And the judge said, you know what, you're right. So then it was kind of open game, right? So I knew that because I was working at a Scientology business at the time. Good morning, Dragonfly. And um, so now it had to go through all this issue authority before you could give a public speech, which really shrunk down Scientology. It was one of the worst things that could have happened to them because people like me or other people talking about Scientology and telling our own personal experiences was what got other people to come in. You know, they'd hear us and go, yeah, that sounds pretty good. All right, I'll try it. But now it was like, mm -mm, you have to go through issue authority and you have to write, say it this way. And da, 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 da. So I knew that that had already come down. So now I'm at this meeting with a bunch of ministers and my minister that we were with and Jeff Jacobson and me. And there's three OTs on the other side. And I walk in. Oh, yeah, that's the other thing. I walk in and this big guy, he's like the, you can tell he's the opinion leader minister of this whole group of ministers, right? And he walks in and just gives me this dirty look. And I know Scientology has dragged him in and told him all kinds of shit about me that isn't true. 
but he doesn't know the difference. And so now he comes in and he's just like kind of giving me this dirty, you know, this dirty, dirty look, right? And so I look at him and I go, okay, let's see how it rolls out. Because I know it's going to roll out okay, because the truth is on our side, right? I know it. It's, it's just the way it is. So sure enough, they have their 13 minutes to talk. And she reads, man has the inalienable right to free speech and free thought and some other shit of Hubbard's. Because they can only read LRH. They can't talk. They can't say how they feel. They can't emote. Do you see what I mean? They can just read now. And that's different than the old days. That's another reason why the old days were better. Because we could talk about it. But now, mm -mm, not at all. You have to just read. So that man is the inalienable right to free speech and free thought. And she read, I don't know, 13 minutes, 12 other minutes of stuff. And then it was the minister's turn. He had 13 minutes. And he brought up the kids and the children and the RPF and suicides and, you know, just every, all kinds of all the abuses that they do. And sure enough, one for one, Barbara, he'd say it to Barbara and she'd look at the next guy and she'd go, I don't really know anything about that. Do you? And he'd go, nope, I really don't. And then we'd go over to them. They brought an attorney with him. So they had three people to bring and one of them was an attorney. And the attorney goes, no, nope, I don't either. You know, so it really, by the end, it just sounds like what I said. You know, it's just like this guy does not know what he's talking about at all. And of course, the ministers who are, you know, his group, they were sort of like, I kind of agree with Scientology. You don't really know what you're talking about, right? And so I just sit back and I go, because that's it. You know, now he's done and he, he you know, he looks kind of crummy. And so I raise my hand and I say, excuse me, can I just ask a question to the guy that was really mean to me walking in? And he goes, yeah, go ahead, ask it. You know, kind of like, give it a shot. I said, okay, I will. And I said, you just said, man has the inalienable right to free speech and free thought. But the truth is, you declare someone suppressive, and then they are not allowed. No one is allowed to talk to them. And I said, in fact, I have my SP declare here, and on the back, and I show it to the big minister, it says, her only terminal is the international justice chief via the continental justice chief. That's right there. And and that's, that's there, right? And so I said, so you don't, that, that isn't, you don't believe, you say man has the inalienable right to free speech and free thought, but you stop free speech all the time. And that's a fact. And you break up families. I brought that up too. And the minister goes, they don't put it in writing, do they? I mean, he was really freaked out that they would write out shit that you had done. And I said, oh, yeah. And I had it there laminated, right? So I passed it around to all the ministers. That was the end of the party. He came up to me, gave me a big hug. He said, I am so sorry for how I acted. I really apologize. And we will always back you up. So anyway, I just thought I'd tell you that story because I thought it was a good one. There you go. So anyway, that's that's my story for tonight. It's short, but I'm going to talk with Natalie tomorrow. And so I, I didn't want to say too much because I'm going to do a whole thing with her tomorrow. At one o'clock, I think we're going to do it. All right. So now let me look up here and we'll check and see. Okay. I already said hello to a bunch of you. Another Aussie is here. All right. Midnight with Magoo. Yes, at 1130. Okay. Love me a good TED Talks. Me too. I really do. I, I check on it all the time. Good stuff. Hey, love it. Yeah. Thank you, love it, for being here. Good morning, Hans Christian. Uh, I really loved you, DOA and Laura, yesterday. He was so high. I know. it was. He was really funny. It was a funny night. He, he was shocked himself. Someone had given him muffins. And he had, you know, he had those hot dogs the day before. And he worked for 16 hours. So somebody left him some muffins and he thought, okay, I'll have these muffins for breakfast. And he said, he said it, I think at eight o'clock at night, he said, Tori, I have never, ever been this stoned in my life. I don't know what they put in it, but it was, you know, it was freaky. It really was. So anyway, it's a very funny video. There's also a lot of misinformation on TikTok. Okay. I, are we talking about TikTok? No. 
I maybe somebody else is talking about TikTok. And yes, there is misinformation. There's all misinformation all around the net. You have to side check everything now. Okay, so um, bottoms up. There's also a lot of, oh, yeah, that's right. I can show that. I can show these. There's also a lot of misinformation on TikTok. Oh, he was the one that said that. Okay. All right, good. Hit the like button. Thank you, Shauna. Or Sean. Sean. Cool. Um, SPTV Warrior says we love a good story. Good. Please hit the like button, subscribe, and all that good stuff. All right. And that's right. Now, they taught me this. Let's see if I can do it. Let's see. I think so. Here's my email. Here's that. Okay. And then here is this. If you want to donate, here's PayPal. They put that in. And then Venmo. I think she also put in Zelle. Anyway, they're all underneath um, Tori, underneath my name, Tori. Chrisman or Tori Magoo 44 underneath it, it says for more information and they're all there. Ooh, I forgot to hit it. See, that's the thing she taught me, but then I forget. Oh yeah, I got to click out of it. There you go. And then I go back to the comments. Okay, I'm getting there. I'm getting there inch by inch, mile by mile. So Patrick Skinner, hello folks. Were you Patrick at the protest? I'm kind of confused about that because I thought you sent me a photograph with you in it. Is, is that you in it? Because... I would have loved to have met you if it was you. Anyway, um, I bet they loved you coming along. They did. It worked out really well. I mean, it would have been a disaster without it. Um, Dennis and chiropractors, the favorites of Scientology. It's true. They are. If you're a dentist or a doctor, beware of those guys because they, they are good at what they do. I will say that. Okay, now, does anyone have a question? Dragonfly says, good morning, Tori. I'm loving your long lives. Our, oh, the long lives, yeah. Your protest tactic was just so awesome. Yeah, thank you. Do you have any questions about that, any of you that watched it? Because I know people, you know, I was surprised at how surprised people were. Because for me, it was just like, I'm going to go talk to them. You know, they had up those barriers and everybody was behind the barriers. And I was like, this is bullshit. Let's go talk to them. And and for me, I knew I had a reason. You know what I mean? I get other people because the police are saying you have to stay behind them. But I was like, look, they owe me a million bucks. You know, I want to get my million dollars and they won't talk to me. So either give me the million dollars, get the IJC, which is on my SP declare and who won't ever talk to me in 24 years, or I'm staying here. And that's the way it is. And the cops all just went, leave her alone. You know, it was just sort of like they, because the lady cop said, look, you know, that's not going to happen today. And I said, you know, that's what they say every day. So one of these days, something has to change. So today's the day I'm staying here. And that's why you see me just standing there. You know, the guy keeps saying, you're trespassing. And I go, thank you. Say it again. You go, you're trespassing. I'd say, thank you. Say it again. You know, because that's a Scientology drill kind of thing. I was just kind of making fun of them. Anyway, trouble, trouble, trouble making squirrels, a lot of you. <laughs> Uptown squirrel. Are you in from Chicago? I've never heard Uptown except in Chicago. Um, was he from the Stand League? Now, wait. I'm, was he from the Stand League? They have a Baptist minister who's on their payroll. You mean the mean guy? I don't know who you mean when you say, was he? Uh, you have to tell, clarify that, who, you, who you're referring to. Great stories. Love you. Thank you, Kim. I don't know why Anonymous stopped protesting, but, well, they had other stuff to do. You know, they, they, were, they stayed way longer than they, they were planning on staying. Um, but you do have... But do you have any thoughts on how to be sure current round of protesting doesn't stop like anonymous did? Hell no. No. You know, it's like things go as long as they go. And it, it, if these guys decide to stop, that's just what happens. You know, it's kind of like some people like me. I mean, I've stayed on for a long time. I started in 2000. It's 2024. That's a long time. But, you know, I stopped for a good maybe five years around COVID, 
mainly because I didn't know how to do all those flashy things on the computer. And I just thought, you know, it's out of my league, really. And then I saw Jessica. And I thought, well, I could do that. I can't do all. She's good at doing all the flashy things. But she explained to me, you don't have to. Just do the live stream and you'll be okay. And I thought, okay, I can do that. So I was back. So that's good. So you never know how long somebody's going to stay or not. I don't. I don't. I don't think. I think you just have to be grateful for people that do stand up and for how long they stand up. I'm always thankful for people and you know, how long they stay is up to them, but certainly all of us have lives. So everybody, I wish them well and say, you know, stay as long as you want, you know, activists like DOA has been an activist for a long time and he's, he's good. He's really on it. And uh, I think Jessica's turning into an activist. I think she started out like a TikToker, but you know, she's, She's getting there. She is. She's she's a trip. She really is. I really love her a lot. She's really great. I like all of them. They're all really wonderful. I mean, Mitzi, didn't she look pretty with that outfit, with her dress and that white jacket she had? She looks like Marilyn Monroe or something, except she had dark hair, but she looks so pretty. All right. My Tony. Hey. Hi, Tori. F. Science of Scientology. Exactly. Thank you for sharing your experience with us. It really helps us never ends gain more perspective. Good. I'm glad because I never know, you know, like if if that would make any difference or not. But you see how, see, they were trying to influence the the um, the, the other religions because one of Osa's goals, I've tell, told you this and I'm going to say it over and over because I think it's very important people not only get it, but you guys start saying it to other people that their goal is to be thought of as a real religion. And they're not, they're a cult. And they're not, you know, it isn't like there's a good cult, and there's a bad cult. You know, I, I heard that from someone tonight. It's like cults are cults. You know, most people that hear the word cult think of bad cults. Maybe there are good cults, but I've never heard someone say, oh yeah, they're a cult and go, oh, well, that's nice. I mean, you could say destructive cult because I do think that helps. It adds a little bit of adjective to it. But either way, you know, it's one of those things where it's important that everyone lets other people know they're just trying to. And it isn't that they're just trying to be a real religion. Like people will a lot of times think of a real religion and think, oh, well, we should be nice to them. Now, these are guys like the mafia. You know what I mean? They're not a religion. They're a mind control their mind control, financial organization hiding behind the curtain of religion. That's what, that's the fact. And everything costs money, everything. So that's where it's like, you could say, well, the Catholic church, I've had people come up to, well, the Catholic church makes a lot of money. Okay. But you don't have to pay for everything. You can go to a Catholic mass for free. If you want to donate, you can. And it's sure they ask, people with a lot of money to chip in more and stuff like that, but it's all on your own. It isn't a price tag. This is a price tag for everything. And in fact, you have to pay to even say you're a Scientologist. Now, Miscavige put that in with the IAS, the International Association of Scientologists. So now you have to pay to say that. All right, question. All right, wait, I got to highlight it. I remembered it. Okay, question. You're aware of uh, video Scientology, the strange case of Stephen Fishman. If yes, you think it's legit what he shares. I haven't seen it. I've got to be honest with you. I've heard of it and I need to watch it. I don't quite know where to find it. Would, would it be on YouTube? Can I find it on YouTube? Because, excuse me, I actually am going to write it down because I, I have, I've been meaning Let's see, what is it? It's, it's called Scientology. Okay. The Strange Case? That's a weird case of Stephen Fishman. Yeah. I will watch it. I bet you it's on YouTube. I'm going to look on there. I bet it is. But thank you for bringing it up. I haven't seen it, so I can't give you an example. But, I mean, I, I can't give you an opinion. But I, I'll watch it, and then I'll let you know. My Tony, hi. Looking forward to the gals chat. All right. Okay. Sounds good. My Tony, all my love for you and Natalie. Yeah, really both, all of us send you our love and prayers and good wishes for healing. 
All right, interesting ideas. Okay, that's somebody talking to somebody else. Arlene, did you all see Chris talk to the Scientology boy today? It was so sad. I didn't. What did he say? I, I didn't see it. And where was it? Okay, Uptown Cur Squirrel. Okay, wait. This isn't a question, but I'll, I'm going to read it. Anon played organized, planned organized protests, right? The current bunch are totally unorganized, and a different mix of folks are showing up daily at different locations. As long as new people trickle in, it keeps going. Exactly. And it's, it's like you have to remember, Anon Anonymous had a different thing. Their view was, if we set a date, and we set a time, which was a little bit, that was my viewpoint also, more people will come because I used to have parties back then. And we'd always set a date, maybe a month in advance. So everybody knew, everybody had time to, you know, put it in their calendar, everything else and come. And a lot of people would come because of that. So that was their thing. But these guys are much more stealth. And it's just sort of like they're going to show up. And I asked them once because they don't call on the phone. They don't really text. Once in a while, they'll call me, but not too much. And I said, how do you how do you know when you guys are going to be somewhere? And they said, we watch our, our live streams. And that's how they know. <laughs> so hello to any of the live streamers, if you might be watching this. <laughs> I think that's really, it's it's just wonderful. I think it's, it's a different, totally different thing. It's like, wow, could we have ever imagined this? I mean, I'm 76. I think back to even 15 years ago, I would have never, ever ever imagined cell phones the way they are the amount of information that's on them just the world in general it's it's kind of a wild trip it really is okay oh well all right and as long as people keep watching I think Scientology people will be watching. It's sort of like, I, I felt that way about the, um, what do you call them, soap operas. I never watched a soap opera. But all the time I thought, how long can they last? You know, it's the same thing over and over from what I understood from people who watched them. And I thought, how long can that last? And look at it. It's st They're still going. The ones that were around when I was a little kid are still going, a lot of them. I mean, it, it's people are into this kind of thing. And Scientology has everything. They've got sex, they've got information, they've got um, meanness, you know, they've got um, interesting people, celebrities, you know, it's sort of like they've got a mixture of all the things that people really like to hear about and see about. So that's why I'd say if you guys have something that you'd like to hear about, you know, send me a message and put in it the, the why, you know, like YouTube. So I know it's YouTube. Otherwise, I won't see it. Tori, have you ever watched the Reckless Band videos? No. What is that? The Reckless Band. The Reckless Ben. Okay, the Reckless Ben. Okay, I'll write it down. Reckless Ben. And that's on YouTube. Again, let me know that. Where where can you see Reckless Ben? Because I don't have cable. I just have a, um antenna. That's it. I have an antenna and Netflix. So those are my two things. I, when I when I left Scientology and came back, you know, we had had financial problems forever because of mostly getting all the money that Church of Scientology. But also, I find my husband would never let me see stuff. He said, oh, I've got it handled. Oh, I've got it handled. He never did. And now I take over all the stuff that we're I'm supposed to pay in this house because we moved here in 1982. We were supposed to only stay for like a month or two, and then we were going to buy a house. Whole different story. But anyway, here I am, and I just started getting on the phone and going, I don't need this. I don't need that. I don't want cable. I don't need five streams of phones. You know, it was just sort of like he had all this stuff that we just didn't even need. I just canceled, canceled, canceled. And I asked one of my computer geek friends, I said, look, I, I just want to watch the basic TV things. What can I use? He said, get an antenna. And I thought he meant you have to have these big antennas on the roof. No, they have these little teeny antennas that you just, it's just sitting up there next to my TV. That's it. And you can see all this stuff. They have all kinds of channels. It's really, and it's 20 bucks. That's it. It's not 20 bucks a month. It's just 20 bucks period. You pay for it. That's it. First time watching you live from San Bernardino. All right. Welcome, Acer. All right. 211. 
Interesting. That's sort of my oldest brother's part of his nickname, but I won't tell you. Okay, let's see. Look at you being so Texan. I mean, I know. I feel so snazzy. I mean, it's like, it's I'm, it's really kind of cute. I feel like a little kid. It's like, wow, I know how to get on the bus all by myself. <laughs> how did you get the bravery to talk to them? Okay, now, this this is talk to who? You mean to the guards? Well, first of all, it it really doesn't take bravery, you know, because I've been, I don't know, I don't know. It, to me, it just isn't, it isn't a matter of bravery. It's a matter of right and wrong. They owe me a million dollars and they won't talk to me at all. Like not a Scientologist is allowed to talk to me. No one. And my only terminal is the IJC and the IJC will never talk to me. So think about it if somebody owed you a million dollars. Now people say, take them to court. I'm not doing that. I'm just not. I, I I know Scientology. I know what they'll do. I've been in court with them and I have no intention of going back in court again. again. And I know they won't pay me the million dollars because they owe people millions and millions of dollars because all of us who left, they owe us money per their tech. L. Ron Hubbard said, if they want to leave, give them the money, get rid of them. That's the policy. So if they had to pay everybody who's paid in and we're talking paid courses. He said, give them their money back. If they're not happy. Oh, oh no way. Miscavige isn't going to give a dime back. I did get back my IAS, because, but that's because of Greg Barnes. I told you that, that he wrote a letter and said, you didn't keep your agreement. I want my money back. And he got a big check. And I said, what did you do? This is in 2000. He said, I told him you didn't, give your, you didn't keep your agreements for the IAS. So I wrote it. I got the letter, wrote mine, got my check. Woohoo! So there was one. And then I got uh, the briefing course. They had my money for years. And I said, either give me the check or you can pay interest on how long you have had my money, which was over 20 years. And it was like, I don't know, thousands of dollars. And I said, I'm going to e either give me the check for the money that's owed or I'm charging the interest on it. And that's by the end of the week. And by the end of the week, I got my check. I, I got it. It was still tricky, but I got it. All right. So there, and then the third one was I got my OT8 back. I still have OT9, 10, and 11 paid for because my mother in law and father in law bought those packages from Hubbard a thousand years ago for 1200 bucks. So I still have that technically because they gave, she gave it to, one to me and one to my husband. But, you know, they're never going to give me that. All right. Not on Sunday, many years ago when I gave you a volunteer protest yellow t shirt. Ah. Oh. Okay, so Patrick, I got gotcha. you. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for giving me that. I remember that. That was cool. That was cool. All right. Um, when are you going? Okay, when are you going to do an interview with Aaron Smith Levin? Um, when Aaron's, well, first of all, if I, if I learn how to do this where I can interview other people, I'll ask him if he'll do an interview. I don't know. Otherwise, he'll have to ask me. Like la last night or today, Natalie asked me, you know, because this was the first time we talked. And she said, yeah, let's do it tomorrow. So we're doing it tomorrow at one o'clock. You know, so it, it just depends on when. I, I don't have a date set up. Um, uh -huh. What is this? Tori has what you'd call moxie. Okay. All right. It was nice when you click the message for us to see. Oh, okay, there you go. It's nice when you click the message for us to see. Okay, there you go. Well, basically I'm supposed to only do that with the questions so it doesn't drag on too long, but um, I do appreciate it, I really do. Um, okay, so it's a Billy Joel pun. Okay, now Uptown Squirrel, you just said it's a Billy Joel pun. If you're talking to me, I would appreciate it if you'd put what was, because I have like three things written down and I don't know which one. If you mean um, Reckless Ben, is that a Billy Joel pun? I don't know. You have to let me know. You have to do a full sentence. Like DLA was really good last night. He was saying, why aren't these people doing full sentences? And, I, you know, I had never... You know, to me, it was just like how people write, but he's kind of right. You can just practice doing a full sentence. So it communicates on this end. 
Please write a question if you have a question for Tori. Thank you. This, this is from Swedish Linja. All right, there you go. Okay, the wind knocked, what is it? This is too long for me to read. The wind knocking down the screen at every one chanting cult, it's a cult, was epic. And Lara singing on the megaphone. So many great moments. I know, it's really, it really was a fun day. And the ironic thing is that I wasn't going to go. I really wasn't. Until I saw DOA, I thought, well, I'll just check and see how he's doing. And I looked on his site, and it was just him. And he had the hot dogs out there and some eggs and stuff like that. And I thought, oh, I got to at least wish him happy Easter. And I said, happy Easter. And he said, get over here. And I said, ah, I'm kind of having transportation problems here. Somebody get Tori an Uber. Somebody get Tori a Lyft right now. You know, and within like two minutes, a lady called me from Arizona. And bless her heart, she paid for my thing to get over there. It was really great. And then Jessica brought me home. So that was fun. So it was a great day. It really was. I, I felt I was really honored to be there. I felt I really was. I felt really cool. I really like those guys a lot, all of them. And I'm still learning some of them. I, they, a lot of them know me because I've been making videos for a hundred years. So they know me, but I'm still, you know, I, I have a part, hard time with names. So it's hard. You meet someone and they go, this is my name. And it's like, okay, but unless we don't, unless we sit, if I spend some time with someone, then I kind of get to know them. But if I, if it's just, this is my name, like my neighbors, they moved in with four kids and I knew this is going to be a disaster. And I said, you know what? They were from Armenia and they barely spoke English. And I said, you know what? Just say hi, neighbor. And it's 20 years later now, the kids are college graduates and they all go, neighbor, hi, neighbor. <laughs> it worked. All right, so let's see. All right, here's a question. Question from interesting ideas. Okay, when you reached OT3, were you shocked at the info or were you already accustomed to Hus Hubbard's talking a lot of sci-fi, many of the basic books such as Insectold Beings in History of Man? Okay, I never... I, I read a little bit of History of Man and I was like, this is way too whacked out for me. So it was like, I I wasn't in that sci-fi thing at all. I still am not. I don't like sci-fi movies. It's not my thing. So for OT3, and many people know this because I've told them this, but I, I don't mind answering it again. Now they have a big course room to kind of iron out all the little things that get someone to the point where they can read this thing about Xenu and it'll be okay. But in my day in 1979, first of all, you have all these people saying, Tori, this is the level that is going to handle epilepsy. This is it. I mean, this is designed for you. And I'm like, really? And they're like, oh yeah, definitely. So I'm, this is for years this went on, you know, no matter what I did, they said, you got to do OT3. That's it. So now I'm at OT3 and I'm in the, it's a little course room at the time. They didn't have a big course room, they had a little course room. And they basically put me in a closet, right? Just think of being in a closet with a little desk in it. And they hand me a pack and I start reading that L. Ron Hubbard nearly died so many years ago researching this. And I thought, well, I nearly died having an epileptic seizure when I was 18. So we're kind of on the same page on that. So that sort of helped me. And then I flip it over and it has the whole 75 million years ago, there was an evil warlord named Xenu. And I literally just sat there going, you have got to be kidding me. This can't be what all these people for all these years have told me is going to help me. You know, it was just, it was just mind boggling. But then I know Scientology, they're not going to change it. This is what it is. And so I had to sit back for a minute and I thought, you know, doctors, and this is true to this day, they don't really know what causes seizures. They don't. They may have a better idea than they did then. This was in 79, but they really don't. They don't know. And I thought, maybe it is these BTs and clusters. Maybe that's what's causing it. And then I started crying. And then, and the supervisor came in and she said, are you okay? And I said, I am. These are good tears. I'm just like, relieved. I think this is going to work for me. And she said, okay, good. So then I did OT3 and people, and I've told you guys this before, they, people were coming up to me saying, 
we've never seen someone have wins like you. And they weren't faking it. You know what I mean? It was, you could tell by how they said it. And I could tell by how I'd look in the mirror and I'd go, I'd have a session and then I'd end it and I'd look in the mirror and I'd go, my God, I am changing. So it really taught me, you know, a man, you know, to the degree that you, you really believe something, say it, think it, it can truly affect how you look. Does it last? No, it doesn't. But it does temporarily. It does. And it was it was pretty shocking. So finally I finish. I think, okay, I'm done. And then I've I've told you guys the rest where I ended up with having status epileptis, multiple grand mal seizures. And I called my friend who was nearly leaving Scientology and I said, just get over here. And he got me to the hospital, to Morton Plant Hospital. And I woke up, I came back to with all these things on my head. And the doctor said, five more minutes and you would have been dead. So thank God I didn't call Scientology because that was my, I was able to subconsciously think, don't call Scientology. They will drive you into Tampa or something and you'll be dead by then. I knew it, I knew it was really close. So anyway, all right, so there you go. That's my OT3 thing. All right, now this is, I meant to mean minister, could he have been from, oh, from the stand league? No, no, not even at all. This guy was a real minister for, he had his own church. He took me to it. No, he had nothing to do with Stan. Stan is a Scientology front group, right? That's the, my understanding of it. And no, he, he was a real minister and for his own church. He had his own church and he just wanted to find out. And then once he found out from me, he wanted the other ministers to get educated on it too. And they did. So, um, okay. All right, Wolf Machine. Fair enough. This is what Wolf Machine says. You can't expect people to devote their entire lives to protesting. Burnout is real. Life happens. Everybody, you know, people, people do different things. Some people do things for a long, long time. You know, I'm sure I never, th if somebody said 24 years from now, you'd still be talking about this. I'd be like, no fucking way. No way. I'll be done in a couple of weeks. You know, I just got a couple of things to say and I'll be out of here. But, you know, you talk to families and they haven't even ever met their grandchildren and you just go, I got to keep talking about this. I got to let people know. So people, because otherwise, if everybody quiets down, they will build back up. It's like weeds. You know what I mean? If you don't, if you don't handle it. So I'm here. I told him that. I said, until you stop breaking up families and stop me free speech, you're going to find Tori, Tori Christman there. And here I am. How did you first meet Jessica? That's a good, that's a good question. Um, but you should write question ahead of it because sometimes I might miss it, just so you know. Um, I have a friend named Andrew who lives in Hollywood. And Andrew used to work at the Egyptian right next to the testing center. And the Egyptian is the Egyptian theater where they had wonderful movies. And for years, Andrew would say, come on over, you know, I'll get you in for free. He'd get all of his friends. He had a whole a family of us that would go there and we'd party afterwards and stuff like that. It was wonderful. So he became a very dear friend of mine. And he became a big critic of Scientology because they would always lie and say, here's a free ticket to the movie theater. You can go on down there. So they'd show up at the Egyptian with their ticket. And Andrew would say, look, this is not Scientology. This is the Egyptian theater. You have to buy a ticket. There's Scientology, right? So he, over the years, became a stronger and stronger critic. He also got into TikTok, which I'm not into TikTok. And he knows that. So he calls me up one day and he goes, you've got to get into TikTok and, and see this chick. And I go, Andrew, you know, I'm not into TikTok. I'm not going to go there because it always seems like I end up with just these dancing people. And, you know, it's just sort of like he's found some cool stuff there, but I, he, he's going to show me how. But anyway, right now, I didn't know how. And I said, Andrew, I'm not going to do it. And he goes, just go to TikTok and type in Jessica Palma Dessa. And so I thought, OK, <clears throat> I will. And you have to know, I had been out in front of the testing center for years, for literally years, telling people there was nothing free in Scientology, you know, just put protesting and stuff like that. And all of a sudden, here's this girl with blonde hair, this little young girl, and they're right in front of her with their cameras, right? And she goes, do you think I'm intimidated by your cameras? I love this. I have 
20 million followers on TikTok and they're all watching you right now. And I just think, oh my God, it's, it's a new thing. You know, it's just like, could we have ever imagined that? No, never. You know, it was just, it was outrageous. And then she walked into the testing center. She just walked right in and the lady goes, get out. And she goes, that's okay. We, I have my followers from TikTok and they're trying to find out what happened to your security card. And this is all on her YouTube site now because Scientology or someone managed to get her entire 20 million or I, I think I, I forget how many millions it was, but it's a lot all kicked off of there. And Streets LA, same thing. Both of their, their accounts, gone. So I, I wanted to meet her. And so I got Drew, who I, we used to pick it together. And I said, come on down. We got to go meet these kids. You know, because I now more of them had come, the two Chris's. And, you know, there's Confident Chris and Chris without a Hellcat. And, they're, they're in, and Streets. But Streets wasn't there that night. So we went just around the complex. And they were there. I said, there's the kids, let's go. And so we pulled up and, you know, it was just fun to meet them. They, you know, it was fun for, I think it was fun for them to meet us and it was really fun for us to meet them. And and Jessica was there. And, and so I think that was the first time we met. And then um, she, I wanted her to teach me how to do this live streaming thing. And she said, well, I'll come over and I'll and I'll interview you and show you how it works. And she's really cool. She has like two cameras, two cameras. Right. So one, she set up filming me like this one. And then this one was in her hands with her, the different people on her site asking questions of me. So she would ask me, I would answer it. You know, it was pretty cool. It was. We still have to do a part B, but it's up there. It's somewhere here with Jessica it, and it's live because it was live stream. So that was my first live stream thing that I did. I felt really great. And then I've just become closer and closer with her. I really like her a lot. And I've gotten to know her and her mother is now a monitor for if I do earlier ones. She goes to bed earlier. So um, and love it is wonderful. She's been great as a moderator. So anyway, that's that's how I mess, met Jessica. And then I've just met more of them since. And I, a lot of it is I watch their things, you know, you get so you feel like, you know, them. I mean, I, I never quite understood it because I hadn't watched YouTube videos of other people that much. And I had made a bunch of them trying to educate people. And the rest of the time I was out helping them or talking to people or doing stuff and I've been working. I was working for years. So I just didn't. But but now I, I watch them and it's like, oh, my God, you know, it's really interesting to see. It really is. It's, it's fascinating to me. Uh, so that's how I met her. And this one. <laughs> Hi, yo. All right. There we go from Alaska. All right. Hello, Mr. Tony. Bunches of people are happy you're here. Tori, we also ha had lunch with Lynn. Oh, right. All right. That's right. We got to get Lynn coming to these protests. That's right. I forgot about Lynn. Well, see, Easter, I Easter wasn't planned. I wasn't going to go. So I, I feel kind of bad because Jesse Prince wanted to come to the next protest. I don't think Jesse would have come on Easter anyway, though, because he has a bunch of kids and they're really sweet. He would have been with them on Easter. But but anyway, I didn't even think about it because of Easter because I wasn't going. And I thought, well, I don't want to bug these guys because they haven't gone at all. Um, but anyway, now the next one, we'll, we'll get him to come, I think, hopefully. Question, do you think that Scientology, let's see what it is. Do you think that Scientology has any connection with Illuminati and people like Puff Daddy, who was trans transferring people and doing other horrible crimes? No. And I know my friend Arnie Lerma got into that big conspiracy stuff like that, and we watched him on the internet go downhill and downhill and downhill, and he, he ended up killing himself. I mean, he also was snorting oxycodone because he had very bad back pain, so that was bad. But I, I don't get into that, all that stuff. I just don't. I don't think they have a connection with that, and I that's all I'm going to say. Okay, so... Yes, this cult is like the mafia. Thank you. You know, it was funny because when I first started saying that in 2000, these critics came out and they said, stop calling 
Scientology, the mafia, you're giving the mafia a bad name. <laughs> okay, so my teaching my mom about the Jehovah's Witnesses being a cult comes from a lot of similarities she saw in Scientology. She wouldn't have watched from what the JWs call apostates, ex-members who speak out. Thanks. All right. Well, good. Yeah, I've helped a lot of ex-Jehovah or Jehovah's Witnesses leave, and and it's been pretty pretty neat, really. I, one of my favorite ones was this lady. I was at a gift show, and I she just started tapping on my shoulder, and I turned around. And I said, "Yeah," and she said, oh, "I'm sorry. I don't I don't want to interrupt you. I'm really sorry." And I said, "No, no, it's okay. What's up?" And she said, "I'm part of your YouTube site." And I said, "Really?" I said, "What happened?" I mean, because she was kind of a you know, at least in her 40s or 50s. And I said, what got you into this? And she goes, well, my kids were into Scientology for a long time. And I just didn't know how to get them out. And, oh, no, it was Jehovah's Witnesses. They were Jehovah's Witnesses. And she said they were in, they were really in it. I got out of it. and I didn't know how to get them out. And I started showing them your videos. And they woke up and they're out. And that's happened a bunch. It started with a couple of kids where they said, Magoo, we were just laughing at you and making fun of you because your videos are so kooky. Because my early videos, I was always doing goofy stuff because I felt like there were ever, people that were on were so serious. And it just was like, I thought it was just too much of a turnoff. So I've always tried to, and Jessica feels the same. It's like, keep a little humor in it. You know what I mean? So that it's not too serious. Anyway. But they woke up, they saw, they started watching my videos and they said, this is the same thing we do in the Jehovah's Witnesses. Let's get out of here. And they did. And they, they wrote me and thanked me. Um, yes, that is my PayPal. Thank you. Thank you. Love it. All right. Wait, let me practice it. Where is it? I think it's, is it here? No, it isn't. It's here. Okay. Here it is. Woo. There you go. Ta -da. That's where, and just so you know, I'm in the middle of trying to get T-O-R-Y back because um, T-O-A spelled it wrong. I should have known. That was that was kind of dumb of me, but I, I just thought, I don't know. I don't know what I thought. But it didn't work, and now I'm trying to talk to PayPal, and that's difficult because they their policies, you can't change it. So it's like, oh, yeah. So if anybody on here knows how I can change my name back to T-O-R-Y instead of I, please email me and let me know. Tori, if you watch Chris's live, made him, made him shut up. Okay, wait, let's see. Made him shut up about 20 minutes in. He was having a, a, a convoy with Chris. A convoy? with Chris and a Scientology lady literally grabbed him and made him leave. Wow. Really? Oh my God. That's too bad. That happened. I told you that happened at author services with me. It wasn't a kid, but it was still pretty freaky to see this military man that I know they hired to guard it. And he and my friend Peter started getting at it where Peter's like, where's Miscavige? And he's like, I don't know. And he's like, it's your job to know. You know, anyway, they're going back and forth. And I just dove in and I said, look, do you have any idea why we're here? And he said, no, I don't. I really don't. So then I told him about the million dollars. And I said, this guy that works here, or used to work here and lives around here sometimes, he he's in charge of the money. So that's why we're here at Author Services where you are. And that's when he just turned white. You know, I just think he had not connected the dots. And the CEO guy comes running around the corner, shoves him into the garage and slams the door. I have no idea what happened to that guy, but I think it impinged. You know what I mean? He, he'll remember it. He'll probably leave. That's, that's my guess. Hey, there's Gucci. Hi. Cassie, I never got to see her. Wait. I never got to see her. I'm excited. Okay, you're talking to somebody else, but who didn't you get to see? That's not fair. Me too, you're a 49 fanners for over 50 years. Wow. Okay, this is another one from my Tony. We, Tony, you just have to come here and we'll have a show with you. Tony Gucci, Dressa in chat is Jessica's mother. That's right. Thank you. That is correct, the mundo. 
all right so she knows me okay good that's what i thought but i thought all right she knows me they're friends and gucci is tori's other mod that's right yeah i'm friends with with love it and i'm friends with gucci i mean and jessica i mean i i love all, all three of them i mean jessica is a stitch she really is she cracks me up She's very funny. I mean, if you go watch her TikTok videos, those are hysterical. She could be a comedian. She really could. She could. I'm not kidding. I mean, she she has a talent and a knack also for editing. So she knows how to edit videos. So, I mean, it, <laughs> she has a couple of them that are just, they make me laugh. I put them on my Facebook site because they made me laugh so much. I wanted to be able to find them because they're so funny. Hey, Sophie, hi. I didn't know you were here also. Evening, Tori. Love it, everyone. Nice. Good early morning from Toronto. All right. Okay, now let's see. Let me see. I better scoot along. Are there any questions you guys have? Let's see. All right, no, wait. I think this is a thing. Sharon, Sharon senior squirrel. Okay. <laughs> On PTS for Life tonight, Jeff's wife gave a seven-minute succinct approach on what we can all do to end C of S tax exemption. Oh, good. Okay. Now, Jeff's wife, you have to give us a little more information than that because I don't know Jeff's wife. I, I don't even, yeah. PTS for life tonight. Okay, so I guess it's PTS for life tonight. All right, so let me just write that down because PTS for life. See, all these new people. It's like, I, I haven't even heard of these people. This is all new for me. Cassie, that, okay. This is Cassie saying that kid has been walking around Jess for quite a while before that conversation. Okay. Well, I hope he's okay. Okay, these guys are talking to each other, so I'm going to move on by. I've heard so many stories and know how abuse and gross science is, but man, Chris's video literally floored me still. Okay, now this is Chris who? This was his, Arlene, what, Chris who? This is the one from tonight at PTS for Life or what? Which one are you we talking about? Chris's video literally floored me still. So let me know which one that you're talking about. Um, you like the video or Tori will get spicy. Ooh, I didn't say that. Oh yeah, there aren't any likes. You're right. Hey, you're right. Thank you for getting me spicy. How come no one's liking my videos? What happened? Maybe it's, maybe they did. Did you? Did you guys like them? I don't see it. Do you see any? Love it. Do you see any likes? I see 170 people and zero likes. That doesn't seem right. There's got to be a few. Have Have you guys liked it? Is there anybody that's liked it? Anyway, I don't know what happened there. Hi, Tony. Sending love and respect to both you and Natalie. Thank you. All right. That's from Malta McMurchie. That's a good name. Okay, uh, I saw Osa Handler's drag away an old man one night after talking. Okay, now what is this? Mini. I saw Osa Handler's dragging away an old man one night after talking to protesters. That was disturbing too. Yeah, stuff they do is disturbing. It is. And, and the amazing thing is all of us have told them over and over what works and what doesn't. And they just keep doing what doesn't. Okay, now let's see what this is. I have a smart TV with a thousand free channels. Yeah, I have that. But I still, I didn't want the cable thing. You could connect to it with your cell phone. Yeah, yeah, I have that. I have a smartphone with, uh, I mean, a smart TV. And I like it. I do. It's actually, um, it's, it's a good little TV. I have two of them. Uh, Got to pack it up. Thank you for all the for all for doing this you're welcome patrick skinner i love your name that's one of my favorite names patrick skinner i really like that but all right and this is what did sophie say wow they must have millions of people's money yeah think about it 
think about it. All the people that are out, because like Spanky said tonight, I was talking to her and she said, just make sure that they know for every one person that's in there, there's about 500 to 1,000 that are out that used to be in there. I mean, it used to be really a jumping place. And that's why Miscavige still tries to promote that image, but it's, it's forget it. You know, the place is dead. But anyway, they do have <clears throat> thousands and thousands of people's money, lots of money, and they should give it back. And some people dig this. If you think that's bad, some people have it on account. I got my money on account back because it was just like I got on it right away and I knew it was going to be a shit storm. And I was just like, no, I want my money. And that was it. I got an attorney and I got it back. But but it, that was just my money on account. Do you see what I mean? That stuff, it's like a savings account that they're keeping your money for when you want to spend it and go on course. But um, the rest of it, all the money that I spent there, Hubbard said, give them their money, get rid of them. And they won't give you a dime of that. But a lot of people have thousands. I mean, I know a few people that have over a hundred thousand dollars on account. It's just savings money that they're keeping. They won't give it back to them. I'm telling you, I would be on their doorstep every fucking day. You know, just like you saw me this weekend. I was there. People are like, how could you do that? How could I not? You know, it's like, give me a break. You know, you're you're my only terminal is the IJC, and that person won't talk to me for 24 years, and you have a million dollars of my money. Uh uh. No. We're here and I'm gonna stay here. And the police were like, just leave her alone. <laughs> you know what I mean? It was just like it was really funny to be on my side of things and seeing them go, just leave her alone. You know, because because the one lady said, you know, that's not going to happen today. And I said, I know it isn't, but that's what they say every day. So today I'm here and you're here and everything's safe. And these guys have a right to protest. And they were kind of mad. Like one cop was kind of mad that Laura was talking in the megaphone. And I said, do you want to know why she's talking in the megaphone like that? And he said, yeah. And I said, because when she was, you know, how old is your your youngest child? And he said, five. And I said, okay. When she was four or three, I think she was four, the very bricks that you were standing on, she had to help lay. She didn't actually lay them, but she was there, you know, helping out kind of thing. And it was like, imagine the past. And her dad is in and won't talk to her. I told her, I said, we should have just a picket up for your dad. That's it. We we're just there for Phil Anderson. That's it. And we're not leaving all day. And see if we can get him out. You never know. You never know. Okay. I thought OTA is a last level. You're right on this. I want to make this clear. And thank you for saying that. It is. And they have nothing more. And of course, they got rid of anybody that had any brains that could maybe even make up something. So it's not going to happen. But Hubbard, many, many years ago, was creating the Bridge to Total Freedom and always trying to get more money. So he sold them OT 9, 10, and 11, you know, at, like as a future thing. This was, you know, they got in in 1950. So this has been a long standing thing. And when I was on OT 7, they called me and they said, okay, we want you to donate the OT 9, 10, and 11 to buy these Dianetic books. And I said, no, I'm not. No. And my husband did. He said, okay, you can. And I said, no, I'm not. And they gave me their big, you know, strong arm, you know, trying to really make me feel bad. And I said, you know, you can say whatever you want to say, but it's it's mine. And no, I'm not donating it to the Church of Scientology, period. And uh, that's that. So we'll see. I mean, it'll be a fun thing if they if he does ever come out with stuff, but I doubt it. He's He's not the sharpest tool in the box. And I don't like that expression, but he really is literally kind of a doughhead as far as I'm concerned. And he's a, he's a bully. You know, he's just a bully. That's what he is. He, it really doesn't have to do with smarts or not. He might be a smart guy, but he's a bully. And that's why I don't like him. And I've watched him in action being a bully and it's really creepy. So I don't think he'll be able to come up. He's gotten rid of everybody that could come up with 9, 10, and 11. You know, even if they were going to, they're gone. And these kids, they're like, forget it. I mean, you can see them. You can see them out on the street. It's like, what is wrong with these people? Exactly. And it was nothing like that when we were in. So, I mean, not nothing like it, but it was not like that. 
it wasn't. Okay, good. So this lady's going to watch Natalie's stream tomorrow. Okay, good. Yeah, because we're going to be on. That'll be good. And this is for Gucci. Okay, she ha Sophie has something to say. Wait. Yes, it is an iron... It is as I, oh, oh, Elron. Okay, as Elron didn't write anymore. But I think people inside the cult think there is two more levels. DM changed the original OT8. I don't think they think there's any, any more levels. I think they know there isn't. I do. I, I mean, I think there's a, a giant maybe, but I, I don't really think they really believe it. I don't. Because if you knew Miscavige at all, and most of them do, He's just a jerk. I mean, he's the guy who came up and told us the reason the Berlin Wall went down is because OT8 was released. We were sitting there. I was in the church. It was like, come on, give me a break. He also hauled in these, these Buddhist monks one time when we were there and said, now, wait a minute. I'm still looking. There's no likes on this. Nobody likes my video. What's going on on this? That's kind of weird. Somebody tell me if you've liked it or not, because it feels kind of weird. Anyway, let me see what this is. Oh, my God. I just adore Natalie. I do, too. My daughter lives in Minnesota and Sanka in her area, and I live in Florida. Ah, oh. <clears throat> well, they're going to Florida. Tony, my Tony and, and she are going to Florida, so maybe you can set up a thing to see them. <clears throat> Excuse me, senior squirrel, Tori. <laughs> good one, good one. You should write OT 9, 10, and 11 since you've already paid for it. We can post it on the internet for everyone. Oh my God, that is hysterical. That is hysterical. I wouldn't possibly do something like that. I mean, I because it's like they would love it if anybody would. You know what I mean? Because at least it would be something. I'm sure Miscavige is, you know, now what is this? Gucci it is, but Hubbard said it goes up to Q5, but Hubbard didn't write them. That doesn't stop them from pre-selling it and saying, Oh, once we hit this target, then we can release. Yeah, exactly. They're always pre-selling stuff. Always. Philosophy, it's okay. Ron can write the other levels when he comes back. <laughs> Gucci. <laughs> oh, that is so funny. Especially because we were in when he was saying he was going to come back. I was like, oh. God. All right. I'm a, here's the Uptown Squirrel. Okay. I'm responding about my name. Thank you. You asked about it. Uptown Squirrel is a pun on the song. Oh, I'm the Uptown Girl. Okay. The reason I ask is because my mother-in-law lived in Uptown and she ran a newspaper in Uptown Chicago. So I, I rarely hear the word, but it really hints home because it was a big deal for her. It really was. It was her community service kind of thing. They also got a lot of people into Scientology. Hubbard mentions on his tapes, he says, hello to Wing and Smokey Angel and Flo and Paul Bizazian, which are my my husband, my ex-husband's mother and father-in-law. And they asked him once, Flo wrote him and said, why did you mention us? And he said, because you kept Scientology alive in Chicago, you know, early on in the 50s and 60s and stuff. And they did. Anyway, Reckless Ben. Oh, okay. This is good to know. Here's this. Reckless Ben is a YouTuber that infiltrated Scientology, then trolled them. He's awesome. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, thank you for explaining that. All right. Thanks, Tori. See you tomorrow. Good night, everyone. <laughs> Fuck little baby. Okay. Bye, my Tony. Have a good sleep. Thank you for coming by. I really appreciate it. And everyone's saying goodbye to my Tony. Glad you caught the midnight with Magoo. So, so tada. All right. And here's Sophie with a question. All right. How much more militant has the cult become since you were in? I mean, tons. I mean, it's night and day difference. It's 
why are they so closed off to the outside world, no public relations? You know, it's, that's a good question, but it's like, you know, you would think if they want to get people in, they would be more inclusive and, <clears throat> but I think they've just gotten worse and worse and worse and more exclusive. And, you know, they're, they're more like the Truman Show. If you've ever seen the movie, the Truman Show, that's them, that's it. And, it, and they've gotten more and more strong on it because people like me woke up. I, they were sending me out to handle the critics and I was, and they'd leave. And then finally I woke up myself and I left. And I told them on my video, I said, I warned you, you and I told you, you're creating your own enemies. And David Miscavige, here I am in the Boston, Magoo dancing in Boston. I told him that in the camera. I said, here I am. I warned you. And here I am. You know, it's. It, I wasn't thinking I'd leave, but I did. I ended up waking up and it was quite shocking. So, um. I hope that answers your question. All right, Zenu, this is good. Sophie and Lovett are both there. All right. And I always say Zenu.net, which is one of my things. Here we go. Boom. There you go. That has great information. If you're new and you don't know anything, like Mark Bunker, when he first started, he was very new. And I would go with him and he would say certain things. And I'd say afterwards, I'd say, you know, just so you know, this is true. This is not. And he really paid attention. He really wanted to get it. And he is one of the best spokespersons now about Scientology. He really, he read stuff and he learned. And, you know, so you can do that. You can go to Xenu.net. You'll learn a lot and you'll be like, oh, my God, now I'm getting it. Do you see what I mean? It's very, it's very worthwhile. Um. What do Scientologists think about the high control groups? Okay, Marissa. What do Scientologists think about high control groups, cults? Well, they didn't want to be thought of as one. So they actually sent me to the Steve Allen Theater years ago to see if Steve Allen would say they were a cult. They sent me to two different places, the Ju Ju Juvenile, the Jewish Federation, to see if they said Scientology was a cult. And they didn't. The year that I went, they they it was around Christmas, and they they had done this wonderful thing, teaching the kids how to tell an abusive web, website from one that isn't. And so I, of course, I mean, and the kids got up, and they were just so strong and so better. And I went back to Scientology, and I said, "We got to do this. This is really great." And they didn't want to hear anything about it, of course, because they don't want the kids on the internet, right? Because they don't they don't want them to read anything. So, um, I forgot what I was talking about. Did you see when they set up the projector on Big Blue? No, I didn't see that. I didn't see that. But you, they were, I guess you were talking to Gucci. All right, here's Gucci. Oh, this is Noir Files. Gucci is right. I don't know why people are duped by Scientology Kid. He was clearing, clearly trying to bait them and it wasn't working, so they took him back in. Who knows? All right, here's Gucci. Yeah, that was their answer to Scientology threatening to sue them. Okay, fair enough. All right, I think that we're at the end of everything. There you go. And we don't have any likes, so I don't know what happened. Maybe this is StreamYard. I'll, I'll ask... Um, um, love it like tomorrow or something because maybe you know what it is because I don't think it's that no one liked it if you didn't if you really didn't like it I want you to tell me thank you love it have a good night everyone yes definitely sleep tight oh really why isn't it showing up there? Thank you, Bottoms Up. I really appreciate it. Oh, that's wonderful. Because I, I, I can't see it at all here. Oh, I did it wrong. I, oh. Sleep fight. 
wait i gotta oh you can't you can't edit okay well anyway you guys know what i mean sleep tight thank you for coming your likes don't show up on Streamyard. okay all right well that's that's good to know well you get to see the comments but you don't get to see the likes but i'd rather see the like the questions in your likes thank you and thank you all for coming i really really appreciate it it's you're a great group of people and thank you to love it for being a moderator and thank you gucci it's just such an honor to have you i didn't know i could get you up this late thank you you're you're wonderful you're a wonderful mom i mean she's really great she helps jessica she's terrific i i think oh if I'd had a mother like that, my life would have been so different. I wouldn't have been in the cult. It would have been great. Anyway, whatever. My mom was great as a little kid. She was great. And then my dad died and everything changed for me. So there you go. All right. So good night, all of you. I love you. Sleep tight and have a wonderful day tomorrow. And if you can, come by at 1, our time, which is Pacific Standard Time. And I'll be with, um, and hopefully, it looks like the StreamYard thing is going to work. So maybe it will. Let's hope. All right. So that'll be with Natalie tomorrow. Okay. Love you. And good night. 169 watching and 183 likes. Thank you, Annie. I appreciate you telling me that. I really <clears throat> didn't know that. Because it, like she said, it doesn't show it here. Oh, now it went away. Ah, oh, well. Oh, there it is, 169. I'm going to write it down just because I I was so surprised. All right, and 183 likes. Well, that's good. So somehow <clears throat> you guys can see them, but I can't. Weird. All right. Well, anyway, I'm happy. Love it. You have to tell Tori how to get to the bottom of the chat one day. I'm not at the bottom of the chat. I am. I'm telling you, I am. You have to hit that the little blue button and it went away. So I don't know how. It was here, but then it went away and now I'm at the bottom. See if I go up, there you go. And then back down. I have to refresh my page to get the update. Glad to, glad it made you happy. It did. Thank you, Annie. It really did. Because I was like, wow, that's that's unusual. <clears throat> okay, kiddos. Well, I'm going to go. I'm going to go to sleep and have a good night's sleep. So I love you. Bye-bye.